Hi, great jobs. Thank you very much for joining me in this session. Uh, we're just going to start with a tree diagram, and it's just going to be a very short lesson. And as I promised, we're just going to do some a quick review on this and take a look at uh, some of the uh, exam past papers on, on how they can examine tree diagrams. All right. Okay, a tree diagram. What is a tree diagram? It's basically a visual representation of all the possible outcomes, right? In events, right? In a particular event. So what actually happens is that you'll have it as sort of like a branch of a tree, right? That will provide the possible outcome for that particular event, right? So tree diagrams are very useful in organizing and uh, visualizing different possible outcomes of a sequence of events, right? Meaning that you can have uh, one, two events, three events, four events, something like that, right? And just have a visual representation of those uh, outcomes of those events on a what? On a tree diagram, right? Where for each possible outcome for the first event, we just draw a line, right? <laughs> that looks like a branch and write down the probability very very important we write down the probability uh, of that outcome right and, and actually say the word if that outcome happened right then for each possible outcome for the second event we do the same right just write the line and also you put uh, the probability of that outcome okay let's say for instance you have two coins right you are tossing two coins and if you are tossing two coins, let me just write coin one, right? So for coin one, you basically have two outcomes, right? It's either you have a head or you have a what? A tail. So this is called a tree diagram because these are branches, right? So on top of those branches, you must put the probability. What is the probability that we get a head? It's actually one, right? One head out of how many total number of sample space? Two, right? Also for tail, the probability is one out of two. And we call that a tree diagram, right? Uh, we can, uh, because we are tossing two coin, I'm just gonna write coin two, coin number two, right? So it actually leaves uh, at, 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 at that other event and form other branches, right? So it means we're just gonna take it there, another one, it's gonna come there. So coin two also have two outcomes, head and tail, head and what? And in a tail, right? Then we can now uh, put probability here to get a head. Obviously, it's one over two. Tail also probability will be one over two. Head one over two. All this will just be what one over two, right? Okay. So we can now go and write our outcomes here, right? Outcomes. Let me just write outcome. I can just put it like this, so that you can see this, right? So it's going to be head and head as our outcome. Head and head. It's going to be head and tail. The second one, head, tail. The other outcome, tail, head, tail, head. Another one, tail, tail. Can you see we have how many outcomes in total? Four possible what? Outcomes, right? If you are tossing what? Two coins. You'll have four possible outcomes. And you can now actually go and and uh, probably if they say what is the probability that uh you'll get a head and a head right so probability that you get a head and a head you just go and check head and a head then you multiply those two probabilities so you say one over two times one over two then you get your answer okay so that will be your answer of probability so uh, basically, that's uh, a tree diagram. Okay, let's now quickly go and look at some past papers and just see how uh, in, in the previous past papers they've been asking you uh, these questions related to tree diagrams. All right. Okay, let's now look at November exemplar past paper 2014. Question 11, 11.2. They are saying two identical bags are filled with balls, right? You have bag A containing three pink and two yellow balls, right? And you have bag B containing five pink and four yellow balls, right? So they tell you that it is equally likely that bag A or bag B is chosen, okay? So each ball has an equal chance of being chosen from the bag, 
right uh, so a bag is chosen at random and a ball is then chosen at random from the bag right so they're starting by choosing a bag then a ball is then chosen from that bag okay so they want us to represent in 11.2.1 this information by means of a what of a tree diagram and clearly indicate the probabilities associated with each branch of the tree and write down all the outcomes and this is for four marks okay let's just quickly go and do that 11.2.1 so the first thing that we are choosing is the bags right you have two bags so you have bag a and you have what bag b what is the probability of choosing bag a that's the question you ask yourself in order to put probabilities on top so you have the probability of choosing bag a is only one out of how many bags out of two that's the probability similarly the probability of choosing bag b it's going to be one out of how many in total out of two right we can now further go and extend our branches secondly what are we choosing we are choosing the balls inside the what the bags right but take note that we have two different types of balls right or rather the colors you have the one that is pink and you have the other one that is what that is yellow similarly in bag b you have pink you also have what you also have yellow what is the probability of choosing pink in bag a we were told that we have what we have three pinks right so it's gonna be three out of how many in total in that bag three plus two which is what which is five okay so what is the probability of choosing yellow it's two right in bag a out of how many in total three plus two which is five okay we can now move to bag b in bag b we have five pink and four yellow balls what is the probability of choosing pink it is five of them out of how many in total five plus four which is what which is nine be very careful there okay so what is the probability of choosing yellow it's gonna be what four out of how many in total out of nine of them in bag b okay so that's basically our tree diagram let's not forget to write down what the outcomes of this so here the outcome will be what one over two times what times three over five right you just multiply the probabilities to get the outcome one over two again in bag a times what times two over five as we are moving in okay this will be one over two times five over nine then the last one will be one over two times four over nine okay so that's basically our what our tree diagram let's now go to 11.2.2 so in 11.2.2 they are saying what is the probability that a yellow ball will be chosen from bag a very very interesting what is the probability of choosing a yellow from bag what from bag a right so we are choosing a yellow ball from bag a right so it's probability of uh, choosing yellow and from bag a okay so what do we do what is the probability of big a it's gonna be one over two multiplied by remember in 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 tree diagram you just multiply those probability and what is the probability of choosing yellow is two over five so it's gonna be one over two times two over five this cancel this then the probability will be what will be one over five let's now go to 11.2.3 now okay so in 11.2.3 they want you to get the probability that a pink ball will be chosen okay they didn't tell you from which bag right it's quite an interesting question really because they didn't tell us whether we are choosing from bag a or bag b they just say find the probability that a pink ball will be chosen so how do we get that probability so what you do is you go and get all probabilities for choosing a pink a ball from all the bags right so you get it from bag a you add it with the probability from bag what from bag b right of choosing a yellow uh, 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 a pink ball actually 
Okay, so in bag A, the probability will be what? 1 over 2 times what? Times 3 over 5. So it will be 1 over 2 times 3 over 5 in bag A. Plus, let's go to bag B. It's going to be 1 over 2 times what? Times 5 over 9. 1 over 2 times 5 over 9. Then we can finally get our answer. Probably let me use a red pen. So it's just going to be that. You multiply, uh, so the first one will be uh, 3 over 10, right? Plus, or rather we can just simply use a calculator and finally get the final answer. Okay, so the answer will be 26 out of 45. Okay, okay, let's now quickly go and look at a different uh, question quite uh, challenging it's from june past paper uh, 2018 so this was the question i think it was question 10 they said in a bag there are x blue balls right and two red balls a ball is selected at random the color is recorded and then replaced very very important okay another ball is then selected at random the color is recorded and then what and then replaced right because sometimes you might find they are removing an item um, and and they don't replace and that affects the total number of sample space okay in the next um, uh, event so the probability that the two balls are different colors is 0.375 draw a tree diagram of the above scenario okay okay so we just gonna draw a tree diagram for this so you have a bag right and inside the bag you have two balls right you have the other one it's blue i'm just gonna put b or oh, let me write this properly and you have the other one is red i'm just gonna put r what is the probability of selecting a blue ball it is x we don't know how many of them right x out of what out of the total number of sample space x plus 2 okay what is the probability of taking a red is 2 out of what out of x plus what plus 2 okay so if we select a ball and then we replace it again we select it and replace it again what is the probability again that we're gonna select another ball so we can extend this right because this was done again and they selected another ball then they replace so we have blue red we have blue red right what is the probability that they would select blue again it's not affected right because they replace after selecting meaning that the number is still the same and the total number of sample space is still the same also for red it's just gonna be the same for blue uh, it's just gonna be the same x over x plus 2 because there was a replacement right so nothing was affected because uh, they they replaced it again okay so 2 over x plus 2 okay so this is our what this is our Venn diagram for that scenario we can just also write the outcomes so this will be x over x plus 2 times x over x plus 2 right so this will be uh, this one x over x plus 2 times 2 over x plus 2 right then you can do it for for the rest of the other ones okay so that's it so this is our, our what our outcomes let's now go to number two very interesting they said hence determine the value of x right how are we gonna solve for x now so we are given something very important here the probability right that the, the probability that the two balls are different colors is 0 0.375 meaning that we're just gonna choose the probabilities of different colors we add them and indicate it to what 0 0.375 and so for x right so which ones are those ones so let me show you different color it's either that he selected blue and red or rather he selected what he selected red and what and blue
So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take those two probabilities. Uh, I mean, those two uh, probabilities from those two events, we add them and we equate them to what? To 0 0.35 because they said the probability that the two balls are different color is what? Is 0 0.35. So I'm just going to say x over x plus 2 times 2 over x plus 2, right? Plus, it's for blue-red. This one is what is probability for blue-red plus probability for what? For red-blue must be equal to 0, 0.375. That's what we are saying, right? Because they say probability that the two balls are different color. So it can be blue-red or it can be red-blue. We add them. Then we equate them to what? To 0, 0.375. Uh, so then we'll say plus this other one, red blue, is going to be 2 over x plus 2 multiplied by x over what? Over x plus 2. Okay. So we, we can just simplify that. So it's just going to be 2x over this one will be x squared plus 4x plus 4. Right? Plus. 2x over what? x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, is equal to 0, 0.375. Remember, we have to solve for x, right? So we can take the lowest common denominator, x squared plus 4x plus 4. Then we'll have 2x plus 2x, right? 2x plus 2x, which is the same as what? As 4x, okay, is equal to 0, 0.375. What can we do now? We can just cross multiply, right? When we cross multiply, it's going to be 0, 0.375x squared plus 4 times 0, 0.375. It's giving us 1,5. So it will be plus 1,5x plus 4 times 0, 0.375. It's going to be 1,5 also. Uh, is equals to what 4x right because 4x times 1 is 4x if we take 4x to the other side to be minus 4x is equals to 0 right so we have something like 0, 0.375 x squared uh, then we have 1,5 minus 4x so it's 1,5 minus 4 it's gonna be what minus 2,5 x plus 1,5 is equals to 0. Okay, so you have your equation like this. Let me just write it in red. 0, 0,375x squared minus 2,5x plus 1,5 is equals to 0. How can you solve for x? You can use the quadratic formula, right? And, and solve for x. Okay, so when you substitute your quadratic formula, it will look like that, right? Then when you solve for x, finally x is going to be 6 or x is going to be equal to 2,5, right? You can't have a ball that is equal to 2, 2, I mean 2 over 3, not 2,5. We can't say a ball, uh, the number of balls is 2 over 3, right? Doesn't really make sense, which is 0, 0,6. So this one will, will not be not applicable because it's not a natural number. So... Uh, our x is equals to what is finally equals to 6 and we know that x is the number of blue balls so meaning that we have 6 blue balls so that's basically how you solve it I know it it, it was quite challenging but it's, it's a matter of applying the uh, the conceptual understanding part to say uh, the probability that the two balls are different color is the probability that Maybe choose blue and red first plus or they might start with red then blue. So you add them and you equate them to that. Then you go and solve for X. Okay. All right. Great tops. This marks the end of our session. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for your patience. I hope you learned something. Otherwise, that's all for me and goodbye.